Hey everyone. Um, this year in the UK, the weather's been really pretty bad, um, wind-wise. Um, but despite that, I've been able to get out a lot, actually. Um, you know, three or four times a week. Um, I put this down to the ability to be able to read the weather forecast pretty well and to combine this with travelling to the best beach. You know, I'll only travel about an hour's drive, um, but often that is enough to actually score a decent forecast, um, whether that be uh, winging um, or uh, kite foiling or, um, or even wind foiling. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd put this video together to share those techniques with you and hopefully um, you'll benefit from you know, more sessions and um, yeah, more stoke hopefully. Now this video is going to be you know, quite based on, on the UK and based on my experiences, um, but this should be transferable to any other location. Um, one thing I think is really, really important you know, when you're looking for a forecast is picking the one with the highest resolution. Um, as I'm going to go into more detail later, you know, the higher resolution allows you to really get those fine grain details which the lower resolution forecasts you know, just don't have at all. Um, some sites um, display like the GFS forecast, uh, which is the global forecasting system created by the Amer American military. This is an incredibly low resolution forecast. Uh, it's 27 kilometer resolution. So in 27 kilometers, you can fit the whole of Greater Manchester. Um, or in four of those cells, you can fit the whole of Greater London. So everything inside the M25 is four cells on that, on that map. Um, so it's got no detail at all. And certainly when you get to um, the way that the, the wind um, interacts with the land as it comes from the sea, um, it, you know, it can't do that at all. Um, so you know, this, this really brings down the quality of the forecast. But if you do have that high resolution forecast, then you'll see all these details that, these, um, that the forecasts have, have picked out for you. And given, given that detail, you can make a really, really good choice on which beach to go to. So the three main forecasts which I use in the UK are firstly the Met Office, um, as I say, this is UK only, run by the UK government, so I'm not going to go into any detail on this because you know, it's, it's not applicable to anywhere else in the world. But I use that a lot. Um, the next is uh, windy.com. Uh, now, windy.com has got lots of um, forecasts from lots of different regions, and the one high resolution forecast that I use for the UK is Arome. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it. That's a 1.3 kilometer resolution forecast produced um, by our friends over the channel in France. Um, so that's very, very useful. It covers a lot of the UK. Um, and then finally, uh, there's something called RASP. Um, this is uh, regional air soaring predictions. Um, these, this is kind of a, a software package which um, is deployed in, in multiple websites, often run by universities and things like that. And quite often there's like a, a web page that you can look at and you can find RASP models which are run in your, in your own country. Um, so this is really, really useful. Um, it has a very good high resolution forecast and it's you know, really good and complementary to the other, the other two forecasts. So I'm going to go into that in quite some detail as well. Okay, so now I'm going to do my little bit as a weatherman. So here we have uh, the windy.com forecast um, showing the United Kingdom. Um, and yeah, so as, as on most sites, there's a usual colour code for to show the wind. So down in the bottom corner here, um, you know, blues are, you know, you wouldn't even go to the beach for that. Greens, you know, a nice foiling weather. And then when you get to the yellows and reds, you're really getting the good good kiting weather. So one thing I'd like to show you on this, I'm just going to zoom in on, on Liverpool here, kind of a Liverpool, um, Lancaster area. So this is showing the GFS forecast, which is the very low resolution one, uh, the 27 kilometer resolution. Now this is produced by the, um, the American military, covers the entire world. 
Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's a baseline for a lot of the forecasts. So if you were in the sort of the Liverpool, uh, Lancaster area, you know, you would just think, I'm going to do something else tomorrow. Um, it doesn't look like there's any wind. You know, maybe if you could travel, you know, you might go over to Anglesey here. Um, and, you know, you might get lucky um, around this area, possibly, um, looking only at this forecast. Um, but, you know, if you weren't up for it, you probably wouldn't bother. You'd do something else. Now, what I'd like to show you is, you know, what happens when we change the resolution of the forecast. So the GFS is a 27 kilometer resolution. If we go to the ECMWF, which is the European uh, Weather Foundation, something like that. Um, so as we can start to see now, we're actually starting to get some more detail now. So this big blue area that was there in the GFS um, has now got some more detail. Um, so, you know, areas around Liverpool, they're looking very marginal. Um, but you might think, oh, I'm going to chance it there. Um, you definitely wouldn't be going around here, let's say. Um, but yeah, you, you know, so you, there's considerably more information there now. Now, I'm going to switch to the um, Arom forecast, so the French model. So this is much, much higher resolution now. So the interesting thing uh, we can see in here is that in all the cases, there was like a big area of no wind kind of up here. You know, um, in the GFS forecast, it was kind of all the way around here. In the ECMWF forecast, it was kind of like a, a spike through here. And we can see it again um, in this Aron model with this kind of this river of not much wind. The interesting thing we can clearly see here is that um, north of it, uh, we've got offshore winds and south of it, we've got onshore winds. So looking at this forecast, you might think, oh, you know, if there's a good beach there, um, we might go somewhere here. Um, whereas um, before you'd have, you'd have probably sacked it off. And interestingly enough, you know, if we look at um, Anglesey, that's not looking so great now. Um, so you might have driven all the way over there um, to, you know, to be very, very disappointed. Now, of course, you know, we're only looking at a forecast here. Um, and this is only, you know, the Aron forecast for tomorrow. You know, I'm not saying that this is necessarily what's going to happen. But you can see the difference in the level of information that these forecasts are bringing to you. Um, one basically showing stay at home, don't do anything. Um, the ECMWF going, well, you know, maybe around Liverpool, it might be all right. Maybe around um, Anglesey, uh, you might get some luck. And then looking at the Aron forecast, it's like, well, you know, it's, it's really kind of narrowed down, you know, places that you could be going. Now, one thing with these high resolution forecasts, I think is really worth mentioning, is that um, one thing I really like to look at is kind of how much the wind actually penetrates the, uh, the land. You know, it's, it's quite common that it's windy at sea and it remains windy at sea, as we can he see here. Um, but quite often, as I was saying earlier, um, when it gets to land, the wind often changes. Um, so, you know, around areas like here, you know, the wind's really not penetrating on land much at all. And whenever I see forecasts like this, I'm a little bit sceptical, um, you know, just because quite often you can get to the beach, you know, maybe it's windy a mile or so out at sea, but on the beach, there's no wind, you know, you're not going to get out there. Um, and that could be a wasted session. So this is one thing um, I'd really recommend doing, you know, seeing how far actually the wind really goes inland. Um, and if it, you know, it really is going significantly inland on these, these high resolution forecasts, then you can get some confidence that, yeah, there's a reasonable chance that it might actually work. So, you know, tomorrow, obviously, I don't know how it's going to be, um, but I think, you know, maybe around real, you know, there might be a reasonable chance. It looks like it's penetrating and landed it there. Um, maybe I'll speak to some people in real tomorrow and I'll find out whether it was actually windy or not. Um, if we go up to the northeast, um, we can see kind of a different picture here. Um, we can see that it's windy over the sea, but it's significantly going inland as well. Um, you know, around here, around um, Filey and, uh, you know, north of Bridlington. Um, you can see that it's it's windy at sea, it's windy inland. Um, and seeing that, I would be pretty confident that I would, you know, likely be getting some decent conditions there. 
So that's that's one thing to really, really look at, I would say. Of course, when you're looking at the very sort of low resolution forecasts, you don't even get that information. You know, if we go back to the GFS now, you know, as you can see, it's saying, oh yeah, it's windy out at land. There's not much wind um, inland, um, but you can't make that judgment what, whatsoever. It just looks like there's a continual um, amount of wind. It's windy at sea, it's less windy inland. There's very little information there. So this is why I really recommend you know, these higher resolution forecasts. Now compared to Windy, um, RASP isn't quite so flashy looking. Uh, it's, it's a little bit more basic. Um, and it's kind of quite a bit more complex as well, actually. Um, now this is the UK version of RASP, um, and there are versions of it all over the world. Um, if you uh, type in RASP, you will find um, pages which will point you to local uh, RASP models. Uh, quite often these are run by universities and things like that. Um, yeah, this is the UK one, um, RASP Stratus it's called. So let's have a, a bit of a look at this. Now, the first thing you want to have a look at is um, obviously you've got the um, the day and the resolution. So this is a two kilometer resolution. Um, so not as high resolution as the Rome. Um, you obviously got the uh, the time and then you've got this um, the parameter it's showing. So this is the boundary layer average wind. Um, you don't want this because this is this is the wind which is very high up. Um, and you want to actually change this to surface wind 10 meters. Um, you can use surface wind two meters uh, for wind foiling. Um, surface wind 10 meters is generally for, you know, for use for kites. I use surface wind 10 meters all the time just because I'm used to it. Um, you know, and I'm used to, you know, how much wind there is. And, you know, I, I just don't like jumping between two and 10 meters. I just use 10 meters all the time. So change that. And as you can see, those colors have gone significantly, significantly more green and blue because the lower you get down, um, the lower the wind generally is. So, yeah, we've got um, today's uh, wind forecast um, for yeah, one o'clock. Um, let's switch it to tomorrow's and we'll go to the 11 o'clock forecast um, just to tally up with what we were looking at on Windy. So if we go over to the, um, the Liverpool area now, so as you can see, um, we've got this, this area of, um, of no wind. We've got this offshore wind flow to the north, and we've got this onshore wind flow to the south. Um, this is showing a bit less wind uh, than the windy forecast was, um, but it's showing a similar kind of pattern. I think the, the interesting thing here is the area of no wind is significantly further north on this windy forecast than it was uh, on the Aron forecast because it was around here on Aron. Um, so, you know, there's a, a level of uncertainty there. Um, but, you know, this is kind of useful information. Oh, I just clicked on, uh, I'm just going to take that back to 11, 11 o'clock. Um, so again, if we go over to Anglesey, again, it's looking like it, you know, it could be on there uh, at the north, um, and you know, one thing I want to say at this point is it's it's really useful to kind of have a look at multiple forecasts and compare them against each other. You know, if they're saying different things, um, then you know you can learn something from that. If they're all agreeing, they're all saying it's windy at a particular location, then you can go there with confidence. Um, if they're significantly disagreeing, uh, you might have your favourite one. You might pick that one. Um, if they're all saying different things, then you know. You know, you should lower your confidence. You know, generally, I would say you know, two out of the three in the UK, you know, out of the Met Office, uh, Windy, and RASP, if two out of those three are agreeing, then I've got a reasonable confidence that it's actually going to show up there. Um, so if we go back over um, to the uh, to the east coast again, as we can see, you know, this is agreeing um, with the other forecast. It's showing a lot of wind um, over this east coast. We can see that it's it's going inland, with this green area is going over the land as well. 
So it suggests that you know it's not stopping at the coast. It's um, yeah, the wind is continuing land. So basically, when you get to the beach, it is likely that it will actually be windy rather than just windy out at sea. Um, one thing I think is um, really quite important to talk about um, while I'm here um, is going back to that point about travelling. Now, once you've got a decent high resolution forecast and you're willing to travel, um, you can really maximise um, the amount of decent sessions you have. Um, so I live in you know, Newcastle upon Tyne, about here. Um, and the main locations I go to um, are quite often up here in the north, um, to, at Boodle and Beedle, Beedle. Um, generally because it, it's quite often quite windy up there. Um, when the wind is kind of southeasterly, it kind of comes around here and it, and it is generally strongest around this corner. It can also be really strong in this particular corner here as well. And there's a there's a valley here, and it kind of it kind of rushes through the it rushes around this corner and through the valley. Uh, so some forecasts sometimes you'll just see a, a really local forecast just around here where it's really really windy. Um, so you know this is kind of an hour's drive from me from here to here, um, and an hour's drive from here to here. Um, and as you can see, you know tomorrow it's not looking particularly windy here, but it's looking significantly more windy here. Um, so it's, it's great to have this high, high resolution forecast and then to be able to make that choice to see where it's best. Um, the other location that I, I quite often go, um, it's an inland lake here. Um, yeah, just, just here, Derwent Reservoir. You might have seen some videos of mine on it. Um, this is another good option because quite often, um, you know, most of the time there's wind at sea, which, you know, comes inland a certain amount. Um, but quite often you get days where, you know, there's no wind at sea, but you get wind in land. Um, and those kind of days are the days that I go to the Derwent Reservoir um, because, you know, it's, it's quite high up in the hills there. Um, the wind can, you know, whistle across from, from the west. Um, obviously tomorrow it's not looking, looking great at all, um, but it's great to have that option. Um, you know, if I only lived here and I only, only went to that beach, um, you know, I wouldn't get out all that often. You know, this is a, you know, there's some great beaches up here um, that work brilliantly when the wind's on. But if you haven't got the option to go here or here, um, then, you know, you're going to get out 40% of the time if compared to if you travel. Of course, the more you travel, the more options you've got. You know, other really good uh, locations are uh, the west coast over here. It can quite often be windy over the west coast when it's not on the east. And similarly to the way that the whistle, uh, the wind whistles around this corner here, it quite often um, really accelerates down this channel um, towards Edinburgh. Um, so some of the beaches around here um, can be very, very windy um, when other areas aren't. This is like a two hour drive for me, so I don't do that all that often. Um, but when I get really desperate and there's really been no wind for a long time, um, yeah, I will, I will pack my bags and I'll, I'll go off up there for the weekend. So I'm just going to wrap up now. I hope you found this video useful and I hope it helps you um, get out much more than you have been in the past, possibly. Um, you know, try it out for yourself. Um, you know, I'd be very interested to hear your comments. Um, if you find it works for you, that'd be great. Um, but I really think, you know, that these, the three things I mentioned, you know, your gear, the ability to travel and the ability to understand the wind make a huge difference. Um, you know, your gear will actually get you to the beach in conditions where um, it's quite marginal. Um, the ability to travel will allow you to, um, to pick that, that perfect spot and knowing the wind allows you to actually make that choice in the first place. Um, so I wouldn't be at all surprised if this could, you know, multiply your days on the water up by two or three times, you know, depending um, how often you're available to get out and, you know, how far you're willing to travel. 
and of course you know how big a, a range of gear you've actually got so i think that's about it from me um i hope you found this useful um i'd love it if you smash subscribe um and um, click that like button um, if you if you found it good um if there's anything else you'd like me to produce um yeah just put something in the chat and i'll see what i can do um but until next time um thank you very much and um i'll see you on my next video later all